Welcome to the show. I'm Jen. My guest today is Spencer Tatum, THP founder and performance director, an epic trainer to help professional athletes down to just your everyday weekend warrior. So thank you for being here. Yeah, it's great. It's great to be here and catch up and yeah. have a chat. I'm excited to share your story and your journey and what THP mm -hmm. does and how you're impacting even the community too. So how did you get into fitness to begin with and that desire to help others reach their goals? Yeah, I think it goes back to my development as a youth and um, being dyslexic and dysgraphic and having that sportism was my outlet. Mm. So to deal with the stressors of school and everything else that goes along with that. And then from there, having multiple injuries. Um, what was that, your sport? What, what uh, you I play? played track and field and football for the most part. Okay. I was an elite track and field athlete and football and went and played college football. But along the way, going to my senior year, I tore my ACL and they were like, oh, it's over. And that wasn't acceptable. So I was able to start out with some really great people like Dr. James Andrews in Birmingham and then uh, went on from there and went to prep school and then to college. And then I had a weird labrum tear injury at that time mm -hmm. that no one really knew about that they couldn't really explain. And I was like, this shouldn't happen based on, you know, the textbook says this shouldn't have happened. So I eventually then went on to with this deep dive into physiology and biomechanics and that kind of led into wanting to help and impact the world and help them understand they, there's a better way. So because of your own injury, you actually ended up doing research and gravitating to how the body functions and heals and then what you can do to build strength and mm -hmm. like prevent injury and maximize your potential when Correct. you're working out? Yeah, so I, you know, everybody has a certain level of genetic expression, right, of, of physical expression. And, and it's, it's thinking about how do we take an individual to optimize that because if we can get the body working, we get it well, we can move well, we can move often then the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. So it's the one thing that we've really focused on. And it's been a big passion of mine is now how do we improve that from elite athlete and allow them to express themselves for millions of dollars in the field or mm -hmm. on the court. And then also too, I was during that time frame, I was also spending a lot of time in physical therapy and I saw this model that, you know, people were not really improving and it's just like that, that shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So that was another huge passion. So we've been really focusing on that and that's been our our main focus and driver, and now we're we're going to do it on mass. That's exciting. So you become a trainer, mm -hmm. then you become an entrepreneur. Yeah, along the way, you, I, you know, I never really thought about myself as an entrepreneur. I, I guess I have that entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I just view it as it's just a bigger platform, mm -hmm. right? Is how can we maximize our reach? Or and you know, I've kind of gotten to a point to where you know, having the fulfillment of working with so many people over my career and make the impact uh, I've made is like now I want to be able to teach others, mm -hmm. right? And help them see the the patterns and, and recognize the principles that are underneath it because what's happening, in, especially in fitness, right? We're drowning in data and mm -hmm. starving mm -hmm. for insights. Mm -hmm. And so I want to give those unique insights and then people can take that and apply that to the real life and understanding like it's not that, it's not as complicated as we're making it out to be. Well, and speaking of people, you work with some of the top athletes in the world. Um, and so I would love for you to share uh, one of the most notable that you work with, because I know you work with many professional athletes, mm -hmm. um, but, and, and a sport that's really big here in Arizona, which is golf. So share a little bit about that experience and how you got into working with um, really those, you mentioned elite athletes and professional athletes. Yeah, I think one of the things that kind of made us unique and made me unique over my career is I treated them like human beings mm -hmm. and, and being able to really understand the person and understand who they are first before of what they are, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so one of those very gifted, unique, talented people that happens to play a sport that many people watch is a guy named John Rahm, mm -hmm. who's had a tremendous amount of success. Yeah. Yes. And is and an, an ASU grad. ASU grad yeah. and just a great human being. Um, so I connected with John in 2000. 15, 14, 14, uh, I started working with uh, Arizona State golf team. Mm -hmm. And there's this young Spaniard who was very talented. And uh, we were both relationship. And I never thought that it would be to where it's at today. But, you know, sometimes you're in the right place and right time. And, and that happened to be that case. And he's had just a spiraling career upward. And it's been exciting to be a part of that journey. Do you golf? Um, <laughs> Has he given you some tips? Do you golf? 
Oh yeah, well, I, I know a lot about the golf. So we got a lot about the sport of golf. It's time, and uh, but I didn't grow up. I mean, I grew up on the other side of the tracks, mm -hmm. right? So the people who were playing golf were in the country club life, and yeah. you know that was not the world I grew up in. And uh, but it was applying the same principles, right? Mm -hmm. So principles stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. So the human body has not really changed in, since evolution, right? Good we yeah. we all have 206 bones in the body and mm -hmm. you know over 400 muscles, but you know, it's the way we express them, the way we connect them, the way mm -hmm. we, we, and a lot of it on the highest level is not really athletic ability. Everybody there at that level has athletic ability. It's, it's more how they perceive their reality. Mm -hmm. And probably a lot of mental as well. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, we can all be in the same environment, but some people will perceive something as stress and some people will perceive something as opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. So coming down from the pro athlete, more of the, the weekend warrior or your everyday person. Uh, what sort of advice do you have for someone who is looking to start a, a regimen or routine uh, for working out and, and getting into shape and, and having a healthier lifestyle? I think that it's just focus on the habits, focus on the process. It's the same thing we talk about with our, our elite athletes. It's never going to be one workout. It's never going to be one training program. It's not going to be 60 days to get in mm -hmm. the best shape of your life. It's going to be a process. It's going to be a lifelong journey of learning and discovery about movement, about health, about what works for you and what's your process. So I think that's the first thing. The second thing is, is don't think that you're gonna flip something so quickly and focus on one habit at a time. Have one key thing you're focused on if it's being consistent, right? And, and moving 30 minutes a day. And then, okay, now I'm gonna start adding some strength training and, mm -hmm. and, and really have a deep, get, find a professional or, or somebody in your network or do an assessment that's online, which is, you know, the, the power of the internet and the digital world is amazing. Oh, yeah. So be able to just to do, find out and really understand where are you today, understand and have a clear vision of where you want to go. And the vision is not going to be lose 20 pounds. The vision is going to be what are you going to, what is this going to do for you? And what is it going to, what is going to give back? And I like what you say about habits because I see a lot of these 30-day challenges and they're great and they're really great for getting people mm -hmm. like kick-started and motivated. But then I also feel like after the 30 days, they drop off. So mm -hmm. finding something that is a lifestyle and a habit, I see being so valuable to really, you know, getting it to be everyday part of your life. Mm -hmm. How much do you feel nutrition plays into the exercise and the workout? It's a huge part, but the, I think the toughest thing with nutrition is a lot, not a lot of people get that right in the beginning, right? You know you're going to yo-yo, and we have emotional connections to food, mm -hmm. right? So if every time you were sad and your dad bought you an ice cream, then you're mm -hmm. having an emotional connection, and that's how you deal with stress, right? So true. Right? So understanding that, and then once again, it's the same thing. Is don't think you're going to go from eating fast food and eating out all the time and, and, and drinking a couple glasses of wine at night to think you're going to automatically go to cold turkey. For some people, they can do that. Mm -hmm. That's very few and far between. Mm -hmm. Those are the outliers. So think about, okay, what's one change you're going to do? And then you got to ask yourself on the nutrition side, same as exercise side, on a confidence scale of 1 to 10, how confident do you feel you can do that? And you want to be an 8 or higher because mm -hmm. you don't want to take a performance-enhancing solution, and we say performance, that means a life performance, mm -hmm. and make that into a performance stressor. Mm. So if you have an 8 Absolutely. out of 10 confidence level and yeah. you're like, okay, I can drink three glasses of water today, mm -hmm. right? And I can, I can sustain that five out of seven days, then start there, right? Because then it becomes, a, once you start understanding what it's like to feel good, then you get that, yep. that addiction. That, that and, high. And you want it. You yeah. want more. So do you find time to work out? Because... Uh, or how do you find time or where do you find time? To I wish out? I had more <laughs> with two kids and I a know. wife and a business and, and uh, the employees we manage. But, you know, it's some days you have to understand where you're at and uh, understand like, hey, that 30 minute, that 10 minute walk and that five minutes is better than no minutes. Mm -hmm. So um, I've gone from the past where I've had four hours to train and, and, and compete. And, and it's just it's just not the right time right now. It's just not. I think one of the things that I think all needs to think about, it's not what to do, it's when to do it. Mm -hmm. So with all of these things you mentioned, even your family, what's next? Because I know you're, you do have that entrepreneurial brain. So what's next for you and THP? Because you've got some exciting things happening. Well, we got an exciting new project we're just launching, uh, Legacy Sports USA. We will be overseeing all fitness, sports performance, sports science, for the largest sports park in the United States. That's unbelievable. And the amount Which is here in the Valley. It's here in the Valley, yeah, right, yeah. in Mesa. And then we're looking to do two more locations in Nashville and Dallas. 
And so with all that, it's okay, how do we scale? How do we make this dynamic user experience? So what we're trying to do is take our process and make it a very simple, applicable user experience for coaches, operators, and for the client that you understand where you're at, you understand where you're going, and you understand mm -hmm. your key focuses every day. So that comes into software development, that comes into machine learning, that comes into artificial intelligence, that wow. comes into videos, and, and being able to educate and empower people. You've always been really good at incorporating the tech and the innovation as it's coming out. So um, I applaud you because um, some people in your industry, mm -hmm. I mean, we've been forced to the last year or so Correct. because things have gone virtual. But I almost feel like you were already doing a lot of those things before we were forced to. Mm -hmm. um, so I know as you continue to grow, you'll be, you know, steps ahead um, of where all of that's going to. So, yeah, congratulations on all that. Thank you. It'll drive you nuts, but <laughs> you have to do it. Yeah, that's to what do your it, right? clients want too. So as legacy gets open and more stuff happens, will you come back and share some of that and all of the cool things that you're doing out there? Absolutely, love to come back and, okay. and chat it up and you know talk about the next phase. It could be a totally different project we're working on next. Yeah, so it's and exciting. maybe we can do some exercises too. Maybe we can. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching now with Jen. We'll see you next time.